Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to name lines, rays, half lines, and segments in multiple ways. This exercise was taken from uh, my math lab question for my course. It says that we're supposed to match each symbol in the first group with a symbol in the second group that names the same set of points based on the figure. So the figure is a line that has four points on it, P, Q, R, and S. And the first symbol that we're given that we need to match with one of the other symbols looks like this. It's P and Q with a little uh, line segment symbol above it. So this represents the portion of the graph from P to Q. But the idea here is that that's not the only way to name that set of points. In fact, when you name a line segment, all you have to do is give one of the endpoints followed by the other endpoint and put the little line segment symbol above and the order doesn't really matter so in other words it would be all right to call this line segment QP. So we're going to match up line segment PQ with line segment QP which is F over here okay because they represent the same set of points all the points from P to Q. Now let's look at the next symbol which is QR with a little arrow over it. So what this means is we're looking for a ray. A ray is an object that starts at a particular point and then extends in one direction. In this case, since Q comes first, the first letter that's listed always indicates the end point of the ray. And then R comes next, that tells you the direction that the ray is pointing. So on the graph that we're given, we know that it starts, uh, the ray that we're talking about starts at Q and it goes in the direction of R, but rays extend indefinitely. So it's going to cover all the points from Q and to the right of Q. But, um, so when we're naming rays, we have to include the endpoint. So whatever other version of the ray, that whatever other name we're going to give to the ray has to have Q in it. And it has to have the, uh, the ray symbol and it always points to the right. But the second letter is any point that's in the correct direction. So I could not put a P here because P is on the wrong side of Q. It's not uh, part of the points that we want to describe. But I could put S because S is also to the right of Q. So another way to name that same ray would be to call it QS. So we're going to match QR with QS which is D here. Okay the next one that we're going to look at is RP with the ray symbol on top of it. So we're looking for ray RP. Now remember, the first letter in a ray is indicating the end point. You can think of it as where the ray starts. So we're starting at R, but we're going in the direction of P. So this time, and we're going to the left. So now our job is to find another way of naming RP. And we have to have R because the endpoint is mandatory in array. But what would be another point to the left of R besides P? Well, Q would also be to the left of R. So RQ is another way to name this ray. So we're going to match RP with RQ. RQ is B there. All right, the next one that we're going to look at is PS with a segment symbol on top of it. And so PS is representing all the points. It's a line segment representing all the points between P and S. Okay, so now we need to find another way to name PS. The rule for line segments is you have to have letters representing both the endpoints. So we have to use P and we have to use S. That's not optional, but the order is because uh, line segments don't have a direction. It's not like they go on forever on one side like rays do. So you're allowed to turn that around and call it 
SP. So we're going to match up PS with SP, which is option E here. Okay, next we're going to look at QR, and it has above it something that looks an awful lot like a ray but what this is indicating is called a half line. When we don't include the point Q, but we include every point up until Q, we indicate that with an open dot there. So that's going to uh, be all of the points starting at the end point Q and going to the right through R, so to the right, um, except we also are indicating here that we are not including the point Q, but everything up until Q. So half line is just like a ray, but it's just missing that one point that would have been the end point. It's still a boundary, but we're not including it in the set of points. Just like a ray, when we name a half line, we have to include that boundary point. So we know that we're gonna have a Q, and we're gonna have the symbol for a half line. The only thing that we can change about the notation is the letter that represents the direction that we're going in. In this case, R was telling us we're going to the right, so we're going to go through S as well, so we could have called this half line QS. So in this case, QR matches up with QS, the half line, which is option A here. Okay, next we're going to look at P. Q with the double arrow over the top, which indicates a line. So this is the line extending in two directions. Lines go on forever in both directions. They don't have an end. Um, this is a line that contains P and Q. It's going to cover the entire line. So we actually have several options for naming this line because when you name a line, all you have to do is name any two points on the line. And so, um, we could um, have called it PR or PS with that line symbol over the top. But also the order in which we um, list the points that are on the line doesn't matter because a line goes in both directions. So we could have called it QP or RP or SP. And also there's really nothing special about the point P. Um, any two of the points on the line will represent the line. So we could have also called it, for example, RS, or we could have called it SQ. There are many ways we could have named that line. So let's see which one is on our list here. So we're looking for a line symbol. Here we go. G is uh, the line RS. That's equivalent to the line PQ. Um, the next object that we're, or set of points that we're going to uh, give a new name to is S Q with a half line symbol over the top. So again, um, with half lines, just like with rays, you can't change the endpoint symbol. The boundary point has to be listed there. Um, the only uh, flexibility that you have is in listing another letter uh, representing a point in the same direction as Q. So let's let's shade in what that represents there. So starting at S and going towards Q, but keeping on going through forever. So it's everything from S, but not including S, since it's a half line, and then going on forever to the left. So what options do we have for another name besides SQ? Well, there are a couple of points to the left of S. We could say SR, and that would indicate the same set of points, or we could say SP, and that would also indicate the same set of points. So looking at our options here, SR appears on our list, and that is uh, option C. So SQ is the same as SR. And then lastly, we're going to look at half line PS, which looks like this. Again, with a half line, uh, you don't have any choice about uh, the boundary point, the end point, if you want to think of it that way. But you can use any letter that's in the same direction as S for the other letter, the other point. So the set we're talking about, let's highlight it, is the set starting at P, not including P, and then going to the right forever. So 
in the original notation, they had used P with S, but we could also have used P with Q, and we could also have used P with R because they're all to the right of P. So which one of these appears on our list? Looks like none of them. So H, none of these is the only one, only option that we have. And we're done. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.